Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about NiArch Linux. So this is a version of Arch Linux that comes with a graphical user interface or GUI. So most versions of Arch Linux are pretty raw, I guess you could say for lack of a better term. And they don't come with a GUI by default, but of course you could add one uh, later if you want to. So many people like Arch Linux because it's more of a pure version of Linux and it supposedly uh, gets updates on its own without you having to do it manually so that's another reason people like it so we're going to show you this version here to see what you think and then you can try it out for yourself all right so to use it you're going to have to download the iso file then either burn a bootable flash drive or cd if you still have one of those and then once you boot up to it you'll have this menu here and you'll have to make a choice or press a key to bypass the timer that's going to count down and automate the startup for you all right, so we have the main option here. Then we have this other option here for the no mode set. So this is used if you're having graphical problems on boot up, uh, but otherwise you should probably just use the uh, first one here. And if you do have some problems, you could try booting it again and use this one here. All right, so we're gonna be running it live, so which means in memory, so not installed on the computer. And that way you could try it out. And if you like it, then you can install it. So we're gonna go through that process as well once we boot it up into the live mode. All right, so we'll just press enter on the keyboard. All right, so once you boot up, um, it's going to ask you to install it, so you don't have to do that if you don't want to, because you can just do it later. So we're going to cancel out of this. All right, so here is our desktop here. All right, so we have our taskbar here with the date and time, uh, some options here for updates, network connections, volume, power options. And then down here, we have kind of a taskbar situation with some default apps here if you want to look at your files for example and so on then you have your app menu here a little search box you can just kind of go through all the settings like that all right so say you were playing around with it and you really liked it and you wanted to install it uh, you could use this option here so we're going to install it and then we'll go through and check out some of the features afterwards because if you use it like this, any changes you make, let's say you install an app or download some files or something, uh, they will be lost because it's technically just running in memory and not off your hard drive. All right, so we're going to click this guy here to install a system. Let's go through the wizard here. You can change your time zone if needed. Change your keyboard layout if needed. All right, so here's where you want to be careful if you have more than one drive on your computer. So let's say you either partitioned your Windows drive if you're dual booting or have a separate drive for dual booting. Or if you're just using uh, Linux by itself, you could uh, use the appropriate option here. So you can manually partition the drive if you want to maybe set some space aside for a separate drive or partition later. But we're just going to use the erase disk and let it create its own partitions. And if you have more than one drive, you could pick it from the drop down there. All right, so here's a summary of what it's going to do. So the current drive here has nothing on it. And here's what it's going to look like afterwards. And then you could also encrypt the drive if you want to do that. Kind of like BitLocker in Windows. All right, let's give a name here for this user. Let's just say Bob. And then you could change the login name if you want to use something else. It'll be all lowercase. Then you could rename the computer if you don't want to use the default. Let's call it that. And then a password for the user account. Okay. And then you can check this box here if you don't want to have to type in the password, which you probably don't want to do, but I'm going to do it just because it's a test computer here. And then same for this box, we're keeping the same password for the administrator account. All right, so here's our summary. So we're going to go ahead and click on install since everything looks good.
All right, so this process will take several minutes, so I will pause the video and then be back for the next step. All right, so the installation is complete. Probably take about five minutes or so. So I'll go ahead and click on Done. All right, so now we're going to remove our flash drive or CD, and then we'll go ahead and restart the computer, and then we'll check it out after that. All right, so now you can see we have a different boot menu here. So if we can just start Linux or go into some advanced options or check your UEFI firmware settings. So we'll just go right into Linux here with the first choice. Here's our user. Looks like the password. Looks like the remember password thing didn't stick. Alright, now we have this little welcome screen if you want to kind of go through this and see all the features. You could do that. It actually gives you links down here to open the specific uh, parts it's talking about. See, we've got the anime theme going with this as well. All right, so here's our desktop. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of this background. Let's go with something like this, for example. Okay, so now we have our basic desktop here. We could right click, change your background, uh, change other display settings, go to other settings. You have your status bar up here at the top like we saw, apps down here, files, recent network trash, all your documents if you had any, kind of like Windows has its quick launch information, same type of thing. Now here's the software app here, so if you want to install software or check software that's already been installed, you can see it's doing an update right now. So here are the installed apps that come with it, so quite a bit here. And we have our update section. It says up to date, but it was updating here, so maybe it's done, looks like it's done. All right, so now you can search here by categories, uh, editor's choice, new and updated, other categories. If you want to change your software repository, you could do that. Preferences for the app. All right, let's try one out here. Let's try this one, for example. Kind of like the Microsoft Store, if you've ever used that. So you just click on Install. All right, then we can open it right from here. All right, just like that. All right, let's check out some of the other apps here from the list. So you can run the tour again if you want. So unfortunately, you know, some of these apps here are not very self-explanatory as to what they do, so you'll have to try them out. Then we have a systems category here, firewall, networking, print settings. Utility section here, disk usage, you want to manage your disks. You can do that from here. I got some tweaks, media player, document viewer. Check your logs, you got your text editor here. Image viewer. You can search for apps up here as well. All right, let's go back over here to the settings app. All right, so a lot of stuff you could do here. We have your network settings. If you need to configure that or disable it, set up a VPN or proxy. 
Bluetooth settings, so no Bluetooth on this computer. Uh, display information with your resolution, so I'm recording at a pretty low resolution here. So you could change this accordingly. Sound options here. So it was able to find the sound device, so that's good. Power options, kind of like Windows has, if you want to adjust these. I always like to turn this off so the screen doesn't go blank. Got your hot corners, active screen edges, appearance options here if you want to change your accent colors, backgrounds like we saw already, default apps. If you want to change your default apps as to what does what, kind of like Windows has. Notification options here. So you could have lock screen notifications. You could even turn on do not disturb. And then decide if you want these apps here to allow you to send notifications or not. Search options here as well. Online accounts. If you want to add your Google account or Microsoft 365 account, you could do that here. We've got some sharing options. So you can set up file sharing here. So if you're at a network with other computers and you want to share files, you could configure that. Of course, you're going to have to do some tweaking depending on what the operating system is on the other computers you're trying to connect with. And then you could change your computer name here. So we configured this in the settings, but you could edit it if you want. Some well-being settings here for time limits for the screen, break reminders, mouse options, keyboard options, color management if you want to configure that for your monitor, printers, so we know printers installed here, but we could add one. And if you see this unlock button you're here, you'll have to put in the password to unlock it. And you could just add a printer. You could even do it by IP address if you want to do that. All right, accessibility options, kind of like Windows has, and privacy and security. And then system information. So you could set up a remote desktop. If you want to add another user, you could do that too. You have to unlock it, of course, for that. So that way nobody adds a user when you walk away from your computer. You can make them an administrator, set up a password, and so on. All right, so you can see it's uh, not super complicated. It's pretty basic, but like I said, if you want to try out Arch Linux and use a GUI, you know, pre-configured, uh, might be something that's worth checking out. All right, so I'll put a link in the description where you can download the ISO image file. And then, of course, you can make your flash drive or bootable CD, run it in memory first to try it out. And then if you like it, you could just go through the installation wizard, and then you'll have it on your computer. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe. Thank mm -hmm. you.